Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing well. So in the previous sessions, I had covered the basics of CAE slash FEA part one, two, three, four, and today I'm here with the part five. So in this session, we'll see about the uh, nonlinear analysis and uh, what and all the uh, nonlinear types are available. So how exactly uh, we need to deal with the uh, contact problems and the nonlinear problems okay let's get started with this <clears throat> yeah the first thing is the question definitely uh, if you're facing the interview this question might definitely arise okay so what are the different types of nonlinearities so there are three Compact, geometry, and material. So, could see the screen. The first one is the geometric nonlinearity. So, if it is related to geometry, what exactly the things are in consideration? That is, large deformation and the large streams. Maybe it's for the geometric nonlinearities. Material. So when it comes to material, when the component or the material goes beyond the elastic limit, it will reach the plastic region. So that time the material will behave as a non-linear. Okay. When it comes to boundary, in short, we call it as contact non-linearity. So if you have the component like assemblies and all, so that time we need to consider these contacts caps and the fits okay well so when it comes to non-linear analysis what are all the material inputs we need first thing is the inks modulus poisons ratio and next one is the trio stress strain data remember there are two types in stress strain curves one is engineering stress strain and then is Geo stress strain, but for the analysis, we consider geo stress strain to get the accurate results with hardening rule that is, kinematic hardening rule and the dynamic hardening rules. The factors we need to consider depending on the requirement. Okay, so you could see the chart in the non linearity. We have geometric material and contact in short. In geometric, we consider large deformations that is, deflection. Material we consider the plastic region. Okay, beyond the elastic limits, we can consider and the creep deformation as well. In contact, we have the frictional contacts, caps, and elastic supports, and the bonded contacts. Okay, no penetration contacts and all. When it comes to a solid works, okay, and it comes to a packers, we have the surface to surface, node to surface contacts and all. That we'll see. Hmm? Yep. So as I said, when it comes to geometry, it is related to large deformation, non-linear, that is the material non-linearity with respect to the uh, plasticity, as I said. But the question arises here, in the non-linear analysis, what makes the analysis or the component to behave non-linear? We already know, right? It will deal with the partial differential equations and other things and all the stiffness matrix everything you will consider right so the answer is for the non-linear analysis the stiffness matrix changes with the solutions the number of iterations so for each non-linear step the stiffness matrix will keep on changing okay because this particular stiffness matrix is the function of the normal displacement. Okay. So if you want to find out the new solution, so uh, it should go through the uh, iterations, right? Multiple uh, iterations. So until and unless it reaches the tolerance level, so the stiffness matrix keeps keep on changing. Okay. So this you need to remember. So what are the objectives of this contact analysis when it comes to contact nonlinearities boundary so first thing whether we need to check the two or more bodies are in contact or not okay 
if it is the case we need to consider the contact nonlinear analysis whether the uh, location or the region is contact means they are in touch one or two bodies are in touch the first option okay how much contact pressure or the force occurs in that interface that also we need to consider okay is there any relative motion between that two contact interface that is also important well so this is the brief explanation about the geometric nonlinearity when it comes to geometric nonlinearity the large deformation leads to the structural deformation which causes the nonlinear behavior of a component okay you need to consider this into account okay so it is not only with respect to the uh, large deformation as i told it is with respect to the large strain and the large rotation tube okay even we can consider the uh, buckling analysis also into this particular geometric nonlinearity. Now the question arises: If we are going to deal with the analysis, we don't know whether it is a linear analysis or the nonlinear analysis, right? So how are we gonna decide it whether it is linear or nonlinear? So the answer is: So in the linear. Uh, geometric analysis the deformation and the rotations are smaller like it is uh, less than 5% of the generic rule that is the strain whatever the strain you are getting it, it is below the 5% if it is exceeding the 5% of the strain whatever you are getting it that is generic rule we need to consider the nonlinear analysis okay so whatever the change in the magnitude of the uh, displacement and rotations are large if it is more than five percent, we need to consider the nonlinear analysis in chart. Okay. Now, when it comes to material nonlinearity, so this is the brief explanation about the same thing. So there are different curves you can see, right? For the uh, the metals, okay, and the uh, brittle materials and the ductile materials okay and even for the uh, non-metals okay the stress strain curves are given for the plastics as well as the for fibers and the abscesses okay next uh, what exactly i need to consider here is uh, the uh, material classifications okay so when it comes to material classifications there are uh, multiple uh, types in it one is the non-linear elastic material okay then next comes is the rubber kind of uh, materials that is hyper elastic materials okay and again we have the uh, linear plastic perfectly plastic or elastic perfectly plastic analysis and all so when strain and temperature dependent elastics and the plasticity as well so we have seen these curves in solid books analysis which we have conducted in these previous uh, tutorials okay so these curves need to uh, remember now this is the again now uh, a uh, few more things you need to consider when it comes to material nonlinearity. We are not going to only consider this stress strain curve, but we also take the additional material details as discussed here. That is, uh, bilinear uh, isotropic materials, we have the elastic perfectly plastic curve, that is, stress strain curve with hardening models, kinematic hardening models. The first one is this one is for bilinear isotropic materials, and this is for multi linear isotropic materials with the hardening models okay so again we have the uh, gaskets into account so if you're going to consider the compression loading conditions and all so these are the curves you need to consider with respect to the uh, the compression the closing of the gaskets okay so if you're going to deal with the advanced analysis these curves will help you to just uh, get the uh, appropriate results now when it comes to a uh, stress strain curve usually uh, we're gonna get the uh, uh, data from the labs right the testing labs and they will provide the few stress strain values okay by conducting the uh, multiple analysis and all okay testings they will give if it is not sometimes you might refer the websites like the matweb and other that you might get the uh, stress strain curve data so if you don't get the uh, stress strain curve data for material non-data analysis, what exactly you can do? 
and simple and refer the relevant material okay and that stress strain flow for uh, analysis which we have taken that we can just refer it for getting the approximate results okay so if you have the x modulus poison ratio and the uh, other uh, inputs relevant to the uh, material which we are considering that you can consider and run the analysis instead of stopping it there and waiting for the uh, stress strain curves to be taken into account okay yep that's all about the material non-linear routine and when it comes to contact non-linearity we need to see these things okay as i said whether the two components or two or more components are in contact or not so whether they are in a certain distance before touching okay so these things and all we can consider so again very important factor that we need to consider in the contact nonlinearity is the friction so while touching so the whatever the coefficient of friction uh, we're going to consider that will help us to decide the amount of resistance between the two contact bodies okay so coefficient of friction plays very important role and even whether the Auto that uh, the touching surfaces are there without friction or it is a lubricated region okay that and all we need to check so depending upon that we need to define the uh coefficient of friction values in the contact regions so if this is a first contact if you're defining you will be having the uh yes that is coefficient of friction values kinematic and dynamic and we'll define that now so one more important thing is so when defining these contacts only we have this fastness so in abacus and in solidworks as well so in hyper mesh we have these uh, fastness into account so one is the point based fastness and the discrete fastness when it comes to point based fastness we can just define it with respect to the position of the uh the fastener so just need to select the point and we need to define it so what are the a uh, point based fastness you are going to define they are the uh, mesh independent fastness so what is the advantage of these kind of fastness so if your model contains the uh, 1000 or 500 fastness so it is the uh, superior performance you can consider so instead of defining all the fastness you can consider the point based fastness into account and you can solve the problem like the spot belt bore belt rivets and all you can have it there okay when it comes to discrete fastness what exactly it does is so it will take the line attachment okay it will create a line and for that line we're gonna attach these surfaces like a bling and tie okay, these things and uh, we're gonna select the faces and we're gonna tie them or we're gonna couple them to that line so that we can apply the uh fastener loading conditions to run the analysis okay so in a bypass also you're gonna have the same thing so you can use these things to define the fasteners inside the software okay so now when it comes to contact we have two things that is the surface surface contact so example uh, can consider two blocks moving related to each other you can define the coefficient of friction and you can run the analysis okay when it comes to node to surface the example is the sharp object like a pin or a bullet penetrating a plate okay the membrane we can consider the uh, shell elements and all so this kind of uh, scenarios we can consider the node to surface contact so when it comes to contacts so we have the two things that is the master surface and the slave surface so when we need to consider how we need to consider you can see the image no? so master surface normals and the slave surfaces you need to remember one more thing master surface can penetrate inside the slave surface you need to uh, remember there is a slight amount of percentage of uh, like penetration you need to define 0.05 percent like that to run the analysis if it is uh, like you, you are, if you are facing the convergence issues with respect to the contacts okay now uh, i'll give you some scenarios to consider the uh, slave and master okay if you have the combination of rigid and deformable uh, body if you are taking these two we need to consider rigid body as a master and the deformable uh, component as a slave okay and when it comes to surface in contact definitions are deformable so both are deformable so then whatever the uh, the contact which you are considering if it is softer 
you need to consider that as a slave the most strong whatever you are considering that should be strong okay when it comes to meshing okay whatever the uh, mesh which is having the dense mesh okay the fine mesh we can just take it as sleeve okay and coarse mesh we can consider it as master okay now uh, again there are a few explanations you can go ahead with the same thing well so these are the main three points you need to remember while dealing with the master and slave surface considerations okay now these are the few contact methodologies you can again read them and you can just go through the explanation so when it comes to the problem with respect to the contact conversions what and all we need to consider how we need to solve them if you're facing the uh, issues with the contacts okay sometimes while running the analysis you want to have the uh, error messages showing that uh, the results cannot converge due to the contact error so at that time what you can do is to fix the rigid body motion what you can do is so you can just uh, try to uh, eliminate the whatever the distance it has in the middle so you can just fix the rigid body and you can even add the friction between the contacting surfaces for converging the results this is the first method okay overcome the non-convergence in the sense you can reduce the stiffness of the contact okay so you can even refine the meshes at the regions of the contact only only that region you can able to uh, have the mesh with the finer elements and you can run the analysis to overcome this non-convergence issues at the contact regions now next thing is what you can do is uh you can just check the uh warning messages and you can read out from there you might get some details to resolve it so sometimes it might penetrate inside so you can just define the uh, friction inside and you can just remesh there okay and normal to surface check the the distance okay whatever the uh, distance between that you have q and no and that you can just define the distance between that two camp to consider it as a uh, like bonded contact Sometimes you can reverse the master slave to uh, resolve this particular issue as well. Okay, and you can even add the damping at that regions. Okay, these are the few steps you can consider to uh, deal with this the uh, contact regions. Yep, so that's all about uh, this particular session. I hope you got to know few things about the uh, nonlinear types and. How we gonna just uh, take them into analysis well that's all thank you guys stay tuned bye everyone